Good morning, my friends. Well, uh, another lovely sunny day. Uh, we're in the early start leaving Drogheda port. Um, as I said last night, it certainly wasn't one of my uh, prettiest stopovers, and it certainly wasn't one of the quietest. But at least I got a sleep. I was tired, I was not tired, I just had to pull in somewhere. So I got a good sleep. Had a good meal last night, so we're now on the move again. So we're following, still traveling north, still traveling towards home along the coast um, towards Carlingford. So we're heading, as I say, from, from dropping out towards Dundalk. Uh, we're going to pick up the coast shortly.
do the best I can, but I should be home by tea time. I don't really see much point extending it to another day. So that's the plan at the minute. So we're looking forward to the next drive around the moors. That's us just crossed the border now, that little bridge. We're now in Northern Ireland. Just left the Republic and crossed the border at Narrow Water. The last time we saw Northern Ireland was in uh, London Derry, just outside London Derry, and entering the little village of Muff.
back on the coast road and I head towards Newcastle. This is a nice piece of the road that just nestles at the foot of the Morn Mountains. Where Percy French penned his famous song, Where the Mountains of Morn Sweep Down to the Sea. There they are, the sleep donnered up ahead, the tallest one, the tallest mountain down there. Been up that a few times. Bloody Bridge Car Park. Uh, just one of the most disgusting toilets I've ever seen. But anyway, I'm going to show you a good view of the Mourns from here. You don't see too much when you're driving along because the camera's facing forwards. As I say, that's over towards John's Point. You can just maybe make out the, the lighthouse. Uh, Chirella Beach and Ballyhorn in the direction I'm heading up that way. And behind me is the Mourn Mountains. I might get a better view from up here. And this is the official start of the Bloody Bridge Pass across the road there and it takes you up through the old quarries up the top of Donard which is that last one there, Sleep Donard and then they go away down towards Tullymoor and then down towards Newcastle
unfortunately she's old school again. When I rebuilt her, I, I didn't modernize her at all. I just built her the way she came out of the factory. It's just, there's no brake servo on it. There's no power assisted brakes. Uh, there's no anti-lock brakes. There's only single brake lines. So I really do think it needs upgraded to a more modern standard. But again, she won't be original then. I'm trying to keep her original as possible. Series 3 Land Rovers had better braking system on them, so I might just bite the bullet. Upgrade her to Series 3 standards with brake servo and dual line brakes. I was very conscious of single line brakes coming down some of those very steep mountain passes I was on. If anything had gone wrong at all, I would have had a total brake failure. But at least with the dual circuit brake, you've always got brakes on one axle if one fails, so I might have to think along those lines and just upgrade it for safety's sake and put a brake servo on it to assist with better brakes, maybe discs as well at the front of it. But then when you start going down that road, you know, where do you end up? You'll end up modernizing everything and engine, gearbox, transfer box, you'll end up with a modern defender if you weren't very careful. Which I don't want to do, I still want to keep her old school series. So I don't know what to do. But I think brakes would be very important, so I might just upgrade them in the meantime. Even uh, she doesn't even have power steering. She was just fitted with a rod and a linkage, the early ones. Power steering didn't really come in until the defenders, so she can be quite happy to turn. She's not too bad, but she can, I can manage it okay. But she can be quite happy to turn around. She's very vague steering, so you have to you drive along the road and the wheel moves left to right to try and keep the straight line. But she's okay. She's safe enough.
There's a better view of the moors there. Sweeping, sweeping down to the sea. And I've just stopped at uh, this little pub along the wayside here. It's from Miners Town. Stanley Woods homeland. I'll just show you his house in a minute. Now, for any motorcyclists who are in the know at all, that was the home of Stanley Woods, the famous Stanley Woods, 10 times TT winner before motorcycles were in fashion. He lived there for many years. I actually went down to his house one time and he signed a beautiful big print for me. A rod organ print of him jumping in Indian's corner. And Stanley went on to win 10 TT wins. He's a man that actually started the fashion of wearing racing leathers. He had the, was at the TT for a year or so and he couldn't understand why boys were riding about in, in suits. And he says to his friend who did leather work, he said, would you make a lovely leather two-piece suit for me? And he, would, he, and he did, and he would out. And it started a trend. And there's people are they're still using leathers today. And he's the man that started it. Stanley Woods. This is his local wee pub below. He was teetotal like, but this is his wee village.
just heard a little rattle from the back of the wagon. I've just pulled in. I've just noticed I've lost my little door, my gas bottle door at the back at the bottom. It, it dropped off in Bally Cotton a few days ago and I managed to hear it hit the ground and I went back and picked it up again but this time I've lost it. I don't know where it is. Uh, luckily enough nothing has fallen out. I picked everything out and put it in the back of the wagon there but the only thing in there now is my gas bottle but it's fairly well secured. So I think it's dropped off somewhere about to drop it or somewhere but I can lie there and I'll make a new one just. It's not really important. So a bit of excitement today. That's us coming into Strangford now. And I'll take you down and show you. Drive around, have to ground a long way today up through the major town of Newtown New Arts. 